Hello, and welcome to our Merchant Center live stream. My name is Mariah, and I am a Merchant Success Lead here at Google. And our goal is to help grow your business using our various tools. Today, we will be talking about Merchant Center, which is our tool that helps you manage how, the, how your product inventory appears on Google. And you can think of this as a virtual training where, we'll le where you'll learn how to use Merchant Center to get discovered across Google. And we'll cover these three topics. One, intro to Merchant Center. Two, troubleshooting tips and tools. And three, guidance on some of the most common issues that we hear. We've created this live stream format as an educational, as additional education channel. And really the goal is to address some of the questions that you have as you're navigating the product or reading through help center articles, and also to provide additional ways to learn about our products and share some best practices, new features and tools. And our hope is that by the end of this live stream, you'll be able to be armored with the information you need to take action. And also just know that your voice is very important to us and we want to continue hearing from you. So at the end of this live stream, we encourage you to take the survey to help us understand how to continue to grow our products and our education channels. Our team is always looking for businesses to partner with in pilots and feedback calls where we can dive in a little bit deeper regarding some of the challenges that you might be facing. So in that survey form that you'll see there on the right side, Go ahead and indicate whether you'd like us to reach out to you and also just let us know what those challenges are so that we can be able to dive deeper into those conversations. Lastly, this conversation or this live stream will be available on demand um, using the same registration link and sign up. So feel free to share this content with your colleagues or you can also view it at a later date. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so intro to Merchant Center. Merchant Center lets you manage how your in-store and online product inventory appears on Google. It allows you to manage feeds, view data, and explore different ways to just show your products on Google. The benefits of Merchant Center are, are these are the, the three main ones, which is you're able to add your products at no cost, and this is in reference to free listings. Um, you can also promote your products to reach more customers, for, with shopping ads. And then also you can get results and insights. And we'll kind of dive into these main pillars and also some of those reports that you can use to be able to understand and measure the performance and their impact of your sales. All right, so many of you might already have a Merchant Center account, but if you don't currently have an account, this is the flow that you'll see when you first sign up. You'll, it'll ask you for your business information. You'll be able to, to decide uh, where you want your customers to check out, whether it's on your website, on Google, or at your local store. Um, and you can also link some of your existing tools like Shopify and PayPal. There are three main Google Shopping programs, or three main programs that um, I wanted to walk over or wanted to go, to go through. Um, free listings, shopping ads, and buy on Google. Free listings is one of our newer programs, and we'll actually be diving in a little bit more deeper into that, into free listings throughout this content, because we continue to hear questions about free listings, um, how to set it up and how to troubleshoot through some of those issues and errors. So we'll use this as an example. With free listings, you're able to add your products for free, reach more customers, and also just get business insights. With shopping ads, if you want to boost your visibility and get more reach, this is a great option for you. And then with buy on Google, this allows you to um, allows users or customers to buy directly on Google. And for you, there's zero Google commission costs. You also get to manage the customer service, and it's all backed by Google Guarantee. Keep in mind that this is currently for US only. All right, so diving a little bit deeper into free listings. Just like we don't charge sites to be part of Google search index, if you are a participating merchant, your products can appear in product results across Google properties for free. So what does that mean? Um, most of you might be familiar with the shopping page on Google. So if you go to the shopping page, at the very top of the screen, you will see shopping ads. Those are, that's usually the first carousel that you'll see there, and it'll be indicated by a little ad icon. Um, but right below the ads, you'll see an indicator for about this page. And everything below that line is all free listings. So this allows you to connect with new customers, share your products, and be able to drive more traffic to your website, to your local storefront, or to buy on Google through those links. 
Um, also, one thing I want to mention is all the products that you'll see here on the shopping page are considered enhanced listings, enhanced free listings. And those require some additional, those have some additional requirements, including data requirements and um, also, also um, having you um, align with various policies and regulations that we'll kind of walk through here on the next couple of slides too. All right, so how does this work behind the scenes? Google syncs your information or information about your products from your product feed, which is a file made up of individual items that you sell. Your listings are then matched with the most relevant search queries, so you get in front of the right shoppers at the right time. You're able to build your product feed in Merchant Center and add various product attributes and identifiers. And then you can also start with using one of your third-party platforms like Shopify or WooCommerce to be able to, to pull in the products um, much more simpler and automatically. There's various different ways that you can set up that product feed and we can dive into them as well. So I mentioned before on the shopping tab that the free listings that you see there are considered enhanced listings. So one thing to keep in mind is there's two different types of listings that you can appear on based on the data requirement, based on data requirements and the, and the um, data, data, data that you provide. Um, so for enhanced listings, these are, both of them are free by the way, um, but enhanced listings are more rich formats. They provide more rich product and business details and um, they're able to appear on surfaces like the shopping tab, which can help boost traffic and sales. So enhanced listings require some additional product data and compliance with our policies for both free listings and shopping ads. And then eligibility is also based on account status and the quality of the data that you provide. Standard listings, on the other hand, are they're also free and they also show on various shopping formats, but these are not included on the shopping tab. Um, and the reason why is because in order to qualify for standard listings, you only have to meet a, a basic set of product attributes, which are ID, title, link, image link, and price. So the ultimate goal would be to be able to increase your, um, be able to improve that rich quality data that you provide so that your ads can appear, your listings can appear on both enhanced and standard listings. All right, getting started. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the setup in Merchant Center and what is required in order to get um, to get started. So we're gonna use free listings as an example. In Merchant Center, when you go through, when you go through Merchant Center or go through the setup flow, um, when you're signing up for a Merchant Center account, these are the things that you'll see that it'll, it'll ask for. First, it'll ask you to verify and claim your website address. This is, um, this is going to be the, it's important to do this first because in order for your products to be approved, you first just have to let us know that you own that website, that you have access to that website. And so go ahead and click through, you can click through this link to ensure that your website is properly verified and claimed and just following that setup flow of how to do so. Adding products. So this is of course one of the most important pieces of Merchant Center is being able to add your product data here. Um, you can add your products through a product feed and there's various ways that you can do so. Um, one, you can either link your products, you can integrate directly with um, a third party like Shopify, you can use structured data, manual offers, um, and then also there's um, some additional ways that you can automatically pull that data in as well. Uh, by the way, there's going to be a free listings webinar next Wednesday where we go a little bit deeper into exactly how to do this and exactly some of those methods in order to add products. But today we're going to keep it a little bit more high level. Um, whenever you're adding that product data, there's a couple of requirements to keep in mind, and these are called attributes. Um, the minimum requirements or minimum feed requirements are item um, ID, title, image link, link, and also price. Um, but if you want your ads to appear on enhanced or your listings to appear as an enhanced listing, then you'll want to also include some of these additional requirements, which we can, um, we'll have a list of here in the next couple of slides. Um, you'll also want to set up your shipping methods, feeds, uh, your shipping, me shipping methods and feeds in Merchant Center or in your feed. Um, and then with tax, you'll want to do the same. Either you can set this up directly in Merchant Center or you can, you can add that within your feed. And then finally, you'll just want to review all of our policies for free listings and ensure that your account and site complies. 
All right, so I'm mentioning these product attributes, but what, what are these things? Um, attributes that help Google distinguish between your products and correctly match them with a shopper search query. So this ensures that the user sees results that they're looking for and that are, that are relevant to what they're searching. Um, for example, if a shopper searches for a large blue t-shirt, Google shows a listing that best matches that search criteria by looking at the data provided for the attributes size, color, and title. Shoppers can also use these attributes to filter their search. So the more attributes you provide, the more data you provide about your products, the better it is for us to be able to match those results. So I mentioned some of those data requirements. These are the ones that you'll, these are the most important ones that you'll want to keep in mind in terms of um, adding them for every single product that you, that you provide. So you'll want to have the item ID, which is often the SKU, the title, the price, the link that you want that, um, the, which is the landing page that you want your, um, the users to go to once they click on that product, the image link, and also if you um, have additional images that you want to provide, you'll use the additional image link attribute. Um, also the description and the availability, which tells users in Google whether you have products in stock, products in stock or out of stock. You also need to include unique product identifiers for all of your products. These are a this is, these are called brand, G10, and MPN. I'll dive into these a little bit more, but it is important that you ensure you to ensure that you're approved for enhanced listings that you include a G10 on all of your products. For some retail categories like apparel or refurbished items, additional attributes are needed to help users identify and filter for your product. Please review these additional categories so that you know which ones to select for better results. And keep in mind that they, these, not all of these attributes might apply to your products, but the more that you do, um, the more that you do provide, the better it is for those users and for Google to match those products. So these are color, size, age group, gender, and then for, for refurbished items, condition. These are some additional attributes for retail categories, variants, multi-packs and bundles, and then also shipping and tax. And as I mentioned before, with shipping and tax, you can actually set up shipping within Merchant Center, um, or you can decide to put it within the feed. When you set it up in Merchant Center, it's able to cover the shipping. Um, sh you're able to set up shipping for all of your products all at once. So it is a little bit easier to do it that way. One thing I do want to note on um, variants is this attribute called item group ID. So this is when you have a product with multiple um, variants um, from another product, for example, size, color, material, and so on. So for an innocent, this example of a Chromecast, you can see that it comes in many different colors. So in this case, color is that variant. And this allows Google to be able to group all of the similar products within one page to be able to make a better and easier, a better um, shopping experience for those customers. All right, navigating Google Merchant Center. So next we're gonna go ahead and show you some of the most common pages and um, tabs that you'll see there when you're going through your Merchant Center account, just to help you get a little bit more familiarized. So the overview page in Merchant Center is home to cards for each Merchant Center feature, plus tasks, feed information, and performance reports. You can also directly access information on your product data by clicking the links within each card. Now keep in mind, it's, these cards might look a little bit different to you depending on which programs you are currently opted into. So if you have a program, if you're opted into Buy on Google, you might see things like orders and returns. And then if you're opted into free listings, you'll be able to see an overview of clicks and impressions, et cetera. Now within the products tab, you'll be able to see um, many, different, many different options um, many additional different tabs within that one um, within that navigation panel. So one of the most popular ones that you'll see there is diagnostics. And we will dive a little bit more into what diagnostics is and how to use that in the, um, in the coming slides, because this is the page you'll use to review and troubleshoot all of your past and current issues with your product data. And you can also use the context filter for more information on product eligibility across different 
features and different programs. It'll also be where you can see all of your product information. This allows you to view and manage individual products and also add additional products directly there within Merchant Center. The collection page is new, and this lets you, lets you show users what products you offer by creating engaging experiences and feature multiple products at once. And then, of course, we have the feeds. So feeds allows you to create and upload feeds. So generally, you won't come back here often unless you are frequently uploading a feed um, or creating new feeds. Um, but generally, you come to this page in the very beginning of the setup process, and then you can always come back here to be able to see your setup and settings um, or download any reports. In the Performance tab in Merchant Center, you can see the dashboard page to get a snapshot of your performance across your shopping programs. So for these examples, you can see a dashboard for free listings, and then also on the right side, you'll see a dashboard for buy on Google. In the free listings dashboard, this traffic will automatically generate as soon as you opt in for free listings. And you can segment this traffic by product, by brand, and by category at the bottom of the report. You can also customize it by the date that you're looking for too. In the performance tab in Merchant Center, you can see the report, you can use the report editor to create customized reports for different aspects of your account's performance. You can also view performance metrics across paid and free shopping activities side by side. In the Your Report tab, you'll be able to build your own performance reports using the metrics that you want. You can choose from a variety of report types to best illustrate your data. And then you can also shape your own dashboards to, to display reports that you're interested um, in that dashboard tab. The Growth tab allows you to explore opportunities for getting more out of your Merchant Center account. In this Opportunities tab, you can drive more traffic to your ads and free listings with personalized recommendations dedicated to helping you improve your free and your improve your free <laughs> your your feed and your campaign. Opportunities use your account's performance history, your campaign settings, and trends across Google to automatically generate recommendations that could improve your performance. The Growth tab in Merchant Center is where you'll find the Performance Competitiveness Report and the Best Sellers Report. These reports are accessible upon enabling the, merchant, the Market Insights Program, which you'll find there under the Manage Programs tab. In the Performance, report, performance Competitive Report, you'll be able to see category and brand price competitiveness overviews, as well as an overall, an offer level performance, offer level price benchmarks. For the best seller report, um, this will allow you to be able to see products and brands on the shopping ads to make help you make smarter assortment decisions. Also in the Growth tab in Merchant Center, you'll be able to discover additional programs in Merchant Center to help you promote and sell your products. This is available under that Growth tab. And then finally, for the shipping settings, if you wanted to create shipping within Merchant Center, you can do so by going to that gear icon at the top of the screen, going into shipping and returns, and you'll be able to see the options for how you can add these shippings, how you can add your shipping, um, your shipping setup. There's two main ways that you can provide those delivery times. One, you can let Google automatically calculate your delivery date based off of your ship from location, your carrier, and your customer location. And then the other option is to manually update your delivery inputs in order to calculate your delivery times. Uh, but you'll wanna make sure to avoid adding too much buffer to these times. All right, so let's go ahead and get into troubleshooting in Merchant Center. The diagnostics page gives you insight into your health, into the health of your product data. So it's easier to identify and resolve problems. It displays product eligibility issues and product data warnings, as well as provides insight into account setup, data quality, and policy violations. So to view the diagnostics page, you'd wanna go sign into Merchant Center, click on that products, uh, click on products from the navigation menu, and then select diagnostics. In diagnostics, you'll be able to see four main tabs, which are item issues, collection issues, feed issues, and account issues. 
There's also a lot of other benefits to the diagnostics page. One, you'll be able to see a historical overview of the status of your products, which allows you to analyze the root cause of past changes in traffic. The context filter helps you display granular information about the status of your product data based on what it's being used for. A downloadable report is also available that helps you see all of the affected items or a single item um, or a single issue to be able to understand the reason for disapprovals. And for impacted clicks, you're able to identify the number of products affected by issues and errors. The item issues tab contains issues that impact individual items. From feed processing to data quality to policy violations, these are all different types of items or different types of errors that you'll see here. And there are currently two types of issues that you'll find, errors and warnings. Errors are these with the red indicator and these items um, indicate that they don't meet minimum requirements and therefore they will not be displayed. So these are problems, these are products that have errors that um, will not show within free listings or shopping. That's what this is indicating. When it's, when it's this yellow icon, that means that it's a warning. And these items are at risk um, and are often served less frequently. And there's simply an indication that this just should be updated. The product details page shows all issues and all attribute values regarding a single product. In addition, you might discover more detailed data regarding the feed error. To get to this page, you'll want to click on the affected item within the diagnostics page or within the all products page. Then you'll want to hover over the issue that, you like, that you'd like to learn more about to reveal links to relevant articles. In this case, this is showing you um, an example of a mismatch value um, with a indicator of what's in the feed and what is shown on the website. When it comes to resolving item levels um, or product issues, that's what we're talking about when we were mentioning the word item. These are all just products. Um, you'll want to hover over that issue and follow the learn more link for specific how to, how to fix help center articles. Each of these help center articles is going to be specific to that error. It allows you to, it shows you how you can see all of the affected products. Um, once you see the affected products, you'll then want to follow the instructions there to update that value or that attribute or whatever that error is suggesting. And then you'll resubmit your product data one of, using one of the methods, either uploading a feed, submitting through your API, or importing content um, from, an, from one of your e-commerce platforms that you might be integrated with. And then you'll just want to check back into the Diagnostics tab just to make sure that that issue is no longer an issue. And just keep in mind, it does take some time for that to reflect. Another great feature in the Diagnostics tab is being able to download reports that contain all of the affected items or even just a single item, um, item to be able to understand that reason for disapproval. So these are the three different ways you can download lists. You can either download a list of all affected items. You can download issues of, uh, download a list of all affected items for a particular issue, or you can just see a list of up to 50 products with a particular issue. All right, so let's discuss what some of these common issues and errors are. So when you're troubleshooting account and product issues, it's important to um, keep in mind that there's an order to it. You'll first wanna start off with account issues because account issues apply, if, if there is, if you do see a warning for an account issue, this is going to apply to the entire account and all associated products. So make sure that you resolve these account issues first, and then you can move on to item level issues. Item level issues are issues that are, item level issues are product by product base. So these are gonna be very specific to each individual product that has a various issue, whether it's with images or with um, the link or with the price indicator. So keep in mind, again, start with account issues first and then you can move on to product issues. Some of the common, common, some of the common account level issues that we see are related to site policies. They're not meeting the various site policies, such as the ones you see here. Missing return and refund policy, insufficient contact information, insufficient payment information, no online purchasing means, checkout insecure, or destination URL down. I'll go through a couple more slides in a bit to show you exactly what each of these means and how to go about fixing them. 
In regards to item level issues, these are the top item level issues that we see affecting the majority of products that are disapproved. The number one being G10s or a lack thereof. Um, so this is a lack or of inclusion and consistent use of unique product identifiers um, such as G10 brand and MPN. And as I mentioned before, providing a G10 is going to be one of the best ways that you can ensure that your account shows for enhanced listings. I'll dive into how to fix this in the coming slides. For images, some of the common blockers include image overlays, non-white backgrounds, or images being too small. Price mismatch and availability mismatch are also common errors, and this is when the price or availability in your product data doesn't match that of your landing page. You can also try turning on or consider using automatic updates or item, automatic item updates to help these um, help this data update automatically. If you see a warning for missing shipping value, you can uh, the best recommendation would be to either add that shipping at the item level, or even better, go into Merchant Center and set up. Make sure that you do have shipping a shipping setting set up in Merchant Center. And then, if you're not seeing that you're eligible for specific programs like enhanced um, enhanced listings, it may be because you're missing required product attributes. As I mentioned, there are attributes that are the minimum uh, are minimum attributes, which are things like item, title, and link. But for enhanced listings, it requires that you provide all of the all of these attributes to in order to provide those users with the best customer experience. So using G10s for product identification. The G10 attribute is required for all products with a G10 assigned by the manufacturer. Our system can, can detect if a G10 hasn't been provided for a particular product where one should exist. Keep in mind when we're talking about G10s, it's essentially the barcode. And there's various IDs that you can submit in place of the G10 attribute. It's UPC, EAN, JAN, ISBN, and ITF. Make sure that you use the correct G10 for each product, including variants like different colors or sizes, because each has its own G10. So make sure that you do submit that correct value. How to find a G10. When a G10 is available, it will appear next to the barcode on your product's packaging. But if you can't find a G10, there's three main ways that we'd recommend. First, contacting the product manufacturer, as the G10 is, um, is associated or is assigned by that manufacturer. You could also search for it by company name in GS1, which is the official provider of G10s, of G10 barcodes globally. And then thirdly, you can search for G10 in Google Shopping. This is a little bit more time consuming, but if you have, if, if you're, if you have a um, small inventory, this is definitely a doable option. With this, you would just go into Google Merchant Center, search for that particular product, click on the view product details, and within there, you'll find the specifications for unique product identifiers. And this will share, show you all the unique product identifiers that we have for that particular product. And then just a pro tip, if you're trying to find the G10 on your barcode and you don't see a number there, you can use you can download a barcan, barcode scanner app to be able to see what that G10 is. If your product does not have a G10, then we recommend using brand and MPN in its place. Products that might not yet have G10s are things like custom-made products, vintage items, replacement parts, um, for example. And then if you were, your product truly doesn't have any unique product identifier, then you'll wanna use the attribute for identifier exists. And this indicates that you have a unique product that doesn't have a, um, that does not have a unique product identifier. But keep in mind that this is only for those cases where there's truly no unique identifier. So just to summarize, the three things you'll want to do just to ensure that your products have the best unique product identifiers and just to avoid any issues for product identification. If your product has, or number one, if your product has a G10 assigned by the manufacturer, then you must provide that G10. We also recommend providing the brand and the MPN when it's available. Any products that are submitted without a G10, when one is truly available, 
may be disapproved or the performance will be limited. Products submitted with incorrect or fake UPIs can also be disapproved. If your product does not have a G10 assigned by the manufacturer, you must provide the brand and the MPN, and just make sure that it's consistent across all the other channels that you use. If your product doesn't have a G10 or MPN, then we recommend still providing your brand, which is your merchant name, and adding your SKU number for the MPN. Again, this is only the case when you truly do not have a G10, um, a G10 or an MPN. Same as before, you'll want to use the same identifiers that you use across other channels like Shopify, eBay, Walmart, or just wherever you sell. All right, in the last section, how to resolve account level issues. So I wanted to go into deep into detail, a little bit more detail about what these are, just because this is a common occurrence that we do see. So ultimately, what you want to do is for in this case, this one is referring to returns and refunds. And this is simply where you want to state how you how returns and refunds are handled on your website. Keep in mind that if you do not allow returns, that is okay, but you just need to make sure that that is clearly stated on your website. The best way to do this is by adding a footer at the bottom of your website with a returns page where, where you have a link that links to your return page, where you have all the information about how you manage and process returns. For insufficient contact information, this is simply indicating that you need to add clear contact contact information to your website. Um, in this, for this particular policy, you'll need to add at least two out of three contact methods from physical, physical address, email address, and phone number. You need to at least have two of those on your website and make sure that that is present before checkout. Insufficient payment information means that you need to state the methods of payments that are accepted, that, that you accept. Um, also make sure that this is done before checkout and that it clearly states all those payment methods that you accept. Again, a best practice for this is including this on the footer of your website. Or um, for insufficient payment methods, a great best practice is to have the icons of the payments that you accept. If you get a warning that you have no online purchasing means or incomplete checkout, that means that it must be possible for all users to complete a purchase of a physical product and get to the product shipping, uh, get the product shipped to a physical address. So review some of these processes that you, or see, see some of these um, violations down below just to ensure that none of these apply to you. Things like not having a buy button or um, if the product changes after the product is added to the cart or the shipping information is provided. Um, or another, another example is when you don't have any functioning online payment methods or technical issues, and then also just requiring like a, a collection of personal information like passports or IDs or documentations um, that are in violation of the country restriction. For insecure checkout, you'll want to ensure that you have a secure checkout. Um, make sure that your website is HTTP, has HTTP, HTTPS uh, when you're asking the customer to provide any financial or personal data. If you see an error for destination URL down, that simply means that the product's landing page is not functioning or working. So ensure that you keep an eye on any and keep an eye on the health of your website to ensure that all of those pages are functioning properly. As you go to review and support, as you go to resolve these issues, the first thing you'll want to do is again go to that accounts item, the accounts errors, accounts what is it accounts errors page in diagnostics, um, and that'll be that'll show you what the issue is. And if you hover over the question mark, you'll be able to click the learn more button to understand exactly what it's asking for. It'll also show you more information about the deadline or the time that you'll need to up, uh, update that. Um, after you fix an issue at hand, you can also request a re-review of your account directly in Merchant Center. You can do this under that account issues page in Diagnostics tab as well. And then if you're still having issues in Merchant Center, you can contact our support team via phone, email, chat, in Merchant Center, um, in the Merchant Center Help Center, or you can also see the contacts, contact information directly in your Merchant Center account. 
One thing I do want to mention um, is that before you request a re-review, you'll want to make sure that you have truly resolved all account issues for a select country. If the issue is unresolved, you won't be able to request another review for at least seven days. So keep in mind that you need to fully address the issue before requesting a review. And that is all of the information I have for you today. So thank you so much for taking the time and joining us. Um, may I encourage you to share your feedback in the feedback form that you'll see there on the right side of the page. Our team truly does read every single one of those entries. And it also will allow you to opt in for pilot programs or for uh, feedback sessions based off of whatever challenges that, it, that you're currently facing. Our team, um, our PM team, loves to be able to hear the voice of the merchant, the voice of the business, voice of the customer, and really just understand how we can continue to improve our products and improve our education, improve all of the, um, the experience you have so we can grow your business. Thank you again so much for attending this live stream. And if you are interested in learning more, we'll, we'll be having a freelancing live stream next week on Wednesday, um, which you can be able to register for to find even more information about free listings. Thank you and have a wonderful day.